Hi, we're here today to talk about financial markets. This is our third talk about them. This is Professor Gerald Friedman, Economics 103, and we're going to talk about asymmetric information in lemons and how you can make money by selling insurance or doing other financial intermediary activities. Now, in perfect competition, efficient financial markets, there'll only be normal rates of profits, whatever those are, because competition among risk-neutral intermediaries will drive insurance profits down to zero, will drive down the cost of selling bonds, stocks, or anything else down to zero, or something pretty close to it. Yeah, this obviously never really happens. Financial intermediaries, banks, investment houses are among the most profitable institutions, most profitable businesses in the U.S. economy and have been throughout capitalism. They are so profitable is because they were monopolies to access. You can't just walk onto the New York Stock Exchange and buy and sell stocks and bonds. You have to be a member. Um, you can't just open an insurance company and sell insurance. Uh, apart from legal barriers to access to the trade, uh, there's a practical barrier that to be a risk-neutral insurer, a risk-neutral financial intermediary, you have to be really big. And that necessarily, apart from regulatory barriers, that necessarily limits competition, allowing profits. Perhaps even more important is you need the trust of people you're selling to. Um, if you're selling insurance, you need people to trust that you will actually deliver when they need you. If you're selling stocks and bonds, you need people to trust that the products you are selling are actually worthwhile. This creates a situation of asymmetric information. When you know something that the other side in the market bargain does not know, maybe the characteristics of the product, the quality, what's really risky in the in investment, what will happen to you after you say yes and agree to go to this college or buy this bond or buy this property? Can you trust that the people you're dealing with will tell you the truth? And can they trust you that you are telling the truth when you buy insurance or when you um, uh, sell a car? Uh, insurers, in particular, select adversely. They try to find out characteristics of the market so that they will sell insurance only to people who won't use it. So you only want to sell flood insurance if you actually know that it will never flood. On the other side, there's moral hazard, where you buy insurance because you know things the company doesn't know about that you never lock your car door, that you are already sick uh, by the time you're buying the health insurance. Um, this situation is moral hazard on your side, and the insurer is always looking out to avoid your moral hazard, just as you look out to avoid the asymmetric. This creates moral hazard and adverse selection create problems for insurance. Um, and insurance is just a specific form of the general problem of financial markets where you're selling promises for money in the future. There are moral hazard and adverse selection problems throughout financial markets. Moral hazard. You <laughs> buy insurance against parking tickets. Of course you do, because you are planning to park illegally. So, they'll pay your fine. You only buy that insurance 
Because you're, exp- you're planning to park illegally. And once you have the insurance, you park illegally all over the place. Um, there's a sign on the, another sign on the New Jersey Turnpike selling um, speeding ticket insurance. Yeah, great. I buy that insurance and then I speed like mad. That should be illegal. Um, would you sell insurance to this nice woman? Of course not. Yeah, would she try to buy more health insurance? Of course. Her buying insurance, that's moral hazard. You're not selling insurance to her, that's adverse selection. There's asymmetric information. And because we know there's asymmetric information, we try to invest with people we trust. Sometimes that's a really, really bad idea because people make mistakes about who they can trust. A lot of people thought they could trust Bernie Madoff. He was a nice religious guy, gave to all the right causes, seemed friendly, was very selective about which people he would invest, uh, which people's investments he would manage. Trust became a form of adverse selection for him. In his case, he was selecting suckers. People knew that he knew more than they did. They were right, because he knew he was stealing them blind. They believed in his asymmetric information. They got one part right, that there was asymmetric information. They got the other part wrong. They couldn't trust him. Specific problem for certain people, but it becomes a real issue because how do you make money? One way you can make money is by using your knowledge and using their misguided trust to do insider trading. Pump and dump. Tell everybody what a great stock it is. Sell them all your shares and then watch it crash. Non-transparent accounting. Why do they make it so hard to know whether they're making money? Sometimes, as with Enron, because they anticipate that they're going to keep selling stock to people, to suckers. People who can't figure out the non-transparent accounting and, for some misguided notion, believe them when they say everything's good. Now, what happens when people know they're being lied to? That's where you get the market for lemons, which is such a great idea. Nice little paper by George Akerlof, for which, you know, basically, this is why he won the Nobel Prize and deserved it. I mean, he did a lot of other stuff, but this is kind of the main thing. That's his wife, Janet Yellen. George Akerlof, Nobel Prize winner, professor of economics at Berkeley, married to head of the Federal Reserve. Market for lemons. The idea is that consumers, if they believe that they're being lied to all the time, will not engage in markets. If with asymmetric information could be important. So you won't buy stocks unless somebody comes in to protect you. It's regulation that restricts, regulations that restrict cheating that make it possible for the market to function at all. Finance, you know, they'll (laughs) bring in tons and tons of lobbyists, uh, really misguided, because it's the regulations that allow their industry to exist. Of course, it's asymmetric information, that allows the industry to make super profits, um, including the profits that people like Bernie Madoff and Enron were making. Only the regu- if there's only the asymmetric information, the industry won't function. Used car markets cannot survive without some honest broker, even if it's the garage up the street or your brother-in-law who looks over the car for you. You need somebody you can trust. You want to buy a used car? The seller tells you it's wonderful. Do you believe him? What kind of sucker are you? Sucker! Well, oh well. She made a mistake. It happens. It's not nice to call them suckers. Um, But the fact is that that's what happens. And used car dealers make money off of suckers. They make super profits off of suckers. And they go around saying, well, we don't want regulation because, well, then we won't be able to make money off of suckers. But what will happen if you don't have regulation? No, because everybody will assume the used cars are junk. They'll assume that all used cars are lemons. 
And if they assume that used cars are lemons, then are you going to sell a good car? No, because people will assume it's a lemon. You won't be able to get a good price, a fair price for your good car, because everybody will assume that it's a lemon like all those other ones. And when you tell them it's a good car, they'll say, ha, I'm not a sucker. I'm not going to believe that. So the only cars on the market, market will be lemons. You will not have a market for good used cars unless there's some regulation protecting the integrity of quality, um, restricting what people can say about a car, certifying that they're only telling, that they're telling the truth, whether they say what the car's good or bad. Lemons are good for drinking. Okay, thank you. And be careful. It's messy out there. Bye-bye.